Hello, I'm Julian Tenney. I'm here with a state of the project update for the Xerti project. So by way of introduction, the Xerti project has been around for some time. We first started writing code in 2004 and made our first open source release in 2006. We started developing Xerti Online Toolkits, the browser-based version of the tools in 2008, and we joined the Imperio Foundation in 2014. So we are a successful and well-established project with large communities of users all over the world, but particularly in the UK and in Northern Europe. I'm joined today um, by some colleagues from the project that are going to talk to you about the specific areas that they've been working on. So Fanning are going to give you some examples of a few of the recent tools that have been developed for creating new types of content. And we're proud as a project to be driven by real world use cases. We work with practitioners to help them develop tools that answer real world um, situations that they, that, that they are finding in their teaching and learning activities. Ron is going to talk to you about accessibility. Accessibility has always been at the forefront of the Xerti developments and we have our own set our own benchmark in terms of wanting to be the very best in breed in terms of the native accessibility that the tools provide. We know that accessibility is a difficult problem for people to resolve and we want people to have as much confidence as possible when they're using Xerti that the materials can be used as easily as possible by as many people as, as, as can be. Uh, Tom is going to talk to you about the standards work that he's doing around LTI and XAPI and this is really exciting. I'm not aware of another tool that has such a comprehensive <coughs> implementation of the standards and it creates some really exciting opportunities for the projects in terms of the very granular data that can be tracked uh, when using the tools and that information, how that can be used to help educators create better content through a greater understanding of how learners are interacting with the materials that they're creating. And Helen will talk to you about the work that she started to do around documentation and testing. So we know that there has been a lot of documentation created in the past and we would like to bring it together into one place and have a consistent format um, and to ensure that it's accurate and up to date and refers to the latest version of the software. And Helen's also starting to help us develop some more robust testing processes so that we can confidently test the code before it's released to make sure that it gets out into the user communities without any issues.